Yes, so we thank you, Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus, the listener, those in our prayers, and family as well. We bind and fetter all the demons in Jesus Christ's name. We come against the spirit of fear and torment and all the spirits under them. We bind and fetter all of them. Against abuse, we command you come out in Jesus' name and go to wherever Lord Jesus would have you go. Be replaced by acclaim, compliment, save, hoard, aid, good deed, advantage, and approval. Agoraphobia, come out in Jesus' name and come out acrophobia as well in Jesus' name and be replaced by ministering spirits. Alarm, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by assurance and calm. Agitation, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by calm, harmony, and order. Alcoholism, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by a ministering spirit in Jesus' name. I had to do like a second tape for this. But yeah, good morning and... Tomorrow, wait, is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow's that day. Gotta get up mad early. Being a clone is cool and all, but man, I wish one was copy. But anyway, uh, I, I doubt I'll get everything. That I'll ever get this thing down packed, but I mean, I think that's okay. Um, again, we bind and rebuke, strip them of their power, every spirit of Jesuits, Illuminati, Freemasons. So, we're going another round at this. We command those spirits to come out in Jesus' name. We bind drowsiness and exhaustion upon them. We bind drowsiness upon the enemy and exhaustion. Those angels to take those spirits to wherever Lord Jesus would have them go. We also bind blindness upon the enemy as well in Jesus' name. I see you. Lose chaos on the enemy after casting out. These evil spirits, paranoia, fear of judgment, fear of being criticized, insecurity come out in Jesus' name and be bound and replace you with ministering spirits in Jesus' name. But yeah, the ones that would interfere with these prayers, we loose upon you, drowsiness, exhaustion, and blindness. All right, so a mathophobia, the fear of dust, come out in Jesus' name. We replace you with liberation, ease, calmness, and a ministering spirit. Apprehension, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by uh, belief. Aviophobia, the fear of flying, come out in Jesus' name. We replace you with the spirit of the Lord. We also replace apprehension with uh, Hebrews 11 and 1. And Hebrews 2 and 13. Condemnation come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by approval. Spirits behind criminal activities. Uh, evil spirits come behind criminal, criminal activities. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by blessed. We also bind those activities as well. In Jesus' name. Deception come out in Jesus' name. And we replace you with lawful and faithfulness in Jesus' name. Dismay come out in Jesus' name and we replace you with assurance and aid. Dread come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by pleasant, calm, steady. Aramophobia, the fear of being alone. Come out in Jesus' name. The spirit, the evil spirits behind that come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by friendly. Extroverted and together. The 
fear of change. The spirit is behind that. Evil spirit is behind that. Come out in Jesus' name. Be replaced by courage. Evil spirits driving fear of people's opinions come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by a healing cure. Medicine. Spirit of medicine. But in a vaccine spirit, but not according to like man, but According to you, Lord. And let it not um, harm the person. Or alter their mind. Or do, or, you know, or make some kind of change that would make them go against, you know, turn away from your word. Um, gamma phobia. Come out in Jesus' name, the fear of marriage. We replace you with a ministering spirit. Gynophobia, the fear of women. Come out in Jesus' name. We replace you with another ministering spirit. Hostility, come out in Jesus' name. We replace you with friendship. Insecurities, come out in Jesus' name. We replace you with another ministering spirit. The same for Kakorophobia, the fear of failure. And Karanophobia, the fear of thunder. Mistrust, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by trust and trusting in the Lord. I forgot which um, psalm was that. I used the blue letter Bible to uh, find the, the spirits in the Bible. So if I put like trust in it, if I type it in there, I should know like uh, which uh, scripture, chapter, and verse. It's in, I think it was a psalm. Trust in the Lord. But yeah, but also make sure you have like a, a basic tr level of trust. Not a well, you know, you can't trust anybody. You can't even trust yourself. You don't need anything advanced. You don't need anything extreme, extreme or advanced. Just a basic level, you know, just to get by. Okay, so, yeah, Psalm, we replace it, uh, that evil spirit with Psalm 5 and 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let, let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. So that was one. And the other one. Psalm 7 and 1. So, O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all of them that persecute me and deliver me. And uh, Psalm 9 and 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. And Psalm 11 and 1. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? Oh, yeah. Well, people always telling us to like get out of here and run and you know, be cowardly and stuff. Yeah, well, that's hilarious. And to thee, uh, no. But there is a time and place to retreat. It's just ain't one of those. Um. And okay, so Psalm sixteen and one: Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm I'm in the middle of something. Hold on, put it put it. Hold on. Yeah, I'll 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 hear you. Um. Okay. So, um. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, that was put there. Okay. So. So okay, we can add loving kindness too. So Psalm seventeen and seven, shew thy marvelous loving kindness, O, o thou sit that savest, O thou that savest by thy right hand, which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. And there's okay, Psalm eighteen and two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, 
my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation in my high tower. This is also one of the, our strongholds. Um, okay, some trust in chariots. So this is Psalm 20 and 7. And some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 25 and 2. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. And in Psalm 25 and 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Psalm 31 and, and 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Psalm 31 and 6. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. Psalm 31 and 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Okay. Psalm 34 and 22, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Psalm 36 and 7, how excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. And Psalm 37 and 3, which is the one I was actually looking for. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and barely thou shalt be fed. Oh, wait, no, not this one. <laughs> it was a different one. Um... Psalm 40 and 4. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Psalm, Psalm 44 and 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. So this one's Psalm 49 and 6. Well, I'm not, we're not adding that one though. Definitely don't trust. In your wealth. Don't boast yourself in the multitude of your riches. Okay, so Psalm 52 and 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Amen. His mercy is what matters. Can't find any, unfortunately. It's, uh, nobody wants to do good. Psalm 55 and 23. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 and 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 and 4. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. That's right. It says here. Psalm 56 and 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. Psalm 64, 61 and 4. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. Psalm 62 and 8. Trust in him at all times. Ye people pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. Okay. Psalm 62 and 10. Trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. If evil riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Psalm 64 and 10. Let 
I'm not sure where it is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, so we're almost approaching there. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Psalm 71 and 1. For thou art my hope. There we bring that. Psalm 71 and 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Psalm 73 and 28. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Psalm 92, 91 and 2. Psalm 91 and 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 115 and 9. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 115 and 10. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 115 and 11. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118 and 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Psalm 118 and 9. Okay. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in thy words. Psalm 119 and 42. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Psalm 125 and 1. Okay, nightmares come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by daymare. Anxiety come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by advantage. Astrophobia, the fear of lightning, come out in Jesus' name. Batro, the spirits behind these phobias. Uh, batrophobia, fear of reptiles, come out in Jesus' name. Catagelophobia, fear of ridicule, come out in Jesus' name. Decidophobia, fear of making decisions, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by ministering spirits. Oh God, consternation, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by assurance. Crying, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by joy and gladness. The spirits behind first and second hand smoking, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by uh, merry, love, joy, in Jesus' name. Spirits behind drug addiction. Drug addiction. Spirits of drug addiction come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by Marian Heart. Extreme shyness come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by boldness. Fear of failure come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by strength. Fear of success come out success come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by bravery. We also bind all our thoughts and bring them under submission, captivity, obedience, authority, and lordship of Jesus Christ. Gatophobia, the fear of cats, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by a ministering spirit. Heaviness, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by praise. Insomnia, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by relaxation and sleep. Loneliness, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Discouragement, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by encouragement. 
Musophobia, the fear of mice, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by the seven spirits of God. Night terrors, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by contentment. Who deceive we rebuke you in Jesus name yeah um I think man I don't know I don't think I shared this but I did get like a threatening email from a hacker and in my own he sent me an email in my own name I thought that was weird seems to be like a lot of strange things are happening but yeah Thought I'd share that. Thank you. And uh, we don't need it. Yeah, I'll just wipe it. Apiphobia, the fear of bees, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by ministering spirits. Aversion, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by liking and calmness. Blenophobia, the fear of slime, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by confidence. Oh yeah, we also replace insomnia with Proverbs 3 and 24 and Psalm 4 and 8 in Jesus' name. Claustrophobia, the fear of enclosed spaces. And that's the worst. That was the worst. But yeah, the spirits, evil spirits behind that come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by assurance. But yeah, that happened to me one time when I was little. That time when I was being kind of dumb, but yeah. Anyway, apologies for that. And the other instance too. Um, okay, so the spirits behind claustrophobia come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by assurance. Control come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by freedom. Cyanophobia, the fear of dogs, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by ministering spirits in Jesus' name. Depression, come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by calm. Doubt, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by belief. Electrophobia, the fear of electricity. The spirits behind that, driving that, controlling that, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by happiness. Fatalism, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by a ministering spirit. Fear of people, come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by solution, also the word of God. And uh, the spirit of God. Forgetfulness, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by attentiveness. Gephyrophobia, uh, the fear of crossing bridges. Gephyrophobia. Yeah, the spirits behind that come out in Jesus' name. The fear of crossing bridges come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by cheer. Horror come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by beauty. Inferiority come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by delight. Intimidation by adversary come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by esteem. And also the... Uh, Angels of the Lord. And his cherubs too and seraphim. I guess, yeah, and also, you know, take those intimidation spirits. Those Pokemon. So I don't just, the angels reporting spirits and intimidation. 
But yeah, take them to wherever Lord Jesus would have them go. And also, you know, you know, so loose warrior angels and warring angels also to guard the person as well. Um, manipulation, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by loving. Okay, so we got, okay, intimidation by everything. Disillusionment, come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by achievement and security. As well as composure and tranquility. Nervousness, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by collectedness. Nyctophobia, the fear of night, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by glee. Also, yeah, we do... We don't just command nervousness to come out. We also cast them out and bind upon them discouragement in Jesus' name. We also bind the good spirits to ourselves, the listener, those in our prayers and family in Jesus' name. We cut off the evil spirits from the people and isolate them and battle them and bind them up and cast them out. In Jesus' name. And we cut them off with, uh, what was it, Exodus 23 and 23. Okay, so. Oclophobia, the fear of crowds. Come out, the spirits behind that come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by joy. Oppression, come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by help, democracy, cheer, kindness, niceness, and weakness. I mean, according to the word, if I remember, it's like in weakness. Uh, let me see. So if I type it in there, it's a handy electronic bo uh, book. Because okay, so first. Colossians, so 1 Corinthians 1 and 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness is, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So, yeah, we definitely replace with the weakness of God, 1 Cor Corinthians 1 and 25, and also his foolishness. Okay, so phobias come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by uh, guts, boldness, guts, boldness, audacity, fearlessness, and nerve. Just the spirit, not making mention or referring to anything other than the original, the basic spirit. No images or nothing. We bind the evil images in our mind. We strip them of their power, we rebuke them, we cast them out and cast them down to the pit or wherever Lord Jesus would have us send them. We bind the evil images of people that haunt us, you know. Well, we bind the evil spirits that, you know, behind that bring it into our mind. And we cast them down, replace them with the opposite good spirits in Jesus' name so it no more, you know, manifests or comes up. Okay, pyrophobia, the fear of fire. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by ministering spirit and respect. Shame, come out in Jesus' name. We bind you, of course. We bind uh, meanness upon you and we cast you out and replace you with honor in Jesus' name. Technophobia, the fear of technology. Trying to get people off the net, get them to abandon it, destroy their devices. For no real reason. And then to say, well, it's uh, the devil, it's evil. Well, it's a tool made available to us by God and we should take full advantage of it. And, you know, for the sake of his uh, glory, um, whatever he would have us do. Yeah, and, and also
also, you know, it's a tool. So technophobia come out in Jesus name and be replaced by love. The lassophobia, the fear of the ocean, come out in Jesus name, be replaced by loving. Triscata the cafobia, the fear of the number 13, come out in Jesus name and be replaced by rapport. Witchcraft come out in Jesus name and be replaced by reality. And spirit reality be multiplied. Yeah, we do bind the good spirits to ourselves and keep them secure. In Jesus' name. And Lord, any curses and spells being sent at me, those are my prayers. They are with us, you know, the listener. Lord, uh, by the blood of Jesus, we command those things to be sent back to the sender. We also lose the spirit of deliverance and adoption. We do pray for the salvation of those people. But of course, you know, we will fight. Um, against torment, madness, fear, and unclean spirits being sent to us by the Illuminati, Jesuits, Masons, witches. Uh, <clears throat> we loose against the torment spirits cheer and aid to bind the, that spirit and get them out of there you know to wherever lord jesus would have and be taken sent uh against fear we lose assurance face and brave to bind fear and do the same against madness we lose sense sanity saneness and balance to bind them and take that spirit to wherever lord jesus would have them be sent also to replace those demons as well that goes for all the good spirits we named. Unclean spirits, uh, against them we lose clean, hygienic, uncontaminated, and unpolluted to bind the spirit and take them off to wherever Lord Jesus would have them be taken and replace them. Okay. Uh, ad, ad, adi... Adenophobia, the fear of pain. So come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by sympathy, oversensitivity. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by you know, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Pining, come out in Jesus' name. Be replaced by ministering and satisfied. Show, show, show lion of phobia, the fear of school. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by approval. Germophobia, the fear of germs. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by beauty. Tepidity, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by unconcerned. Glossophobia, the fear of performing. Stage fright, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by delight. Tropophobia. Nah, I get enough. Tropophobia, the fear of moving or making changes. Come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by desire. Okay, so what are you going to do? Okay, so I take authority over the spirits of pride to go and attack the, the other free demons in Jesus' name. And we also lose angels with, uh, we lose, sorry, we lose beautiful majestic angels with shields and bucklers and staves to bind up any other, you know, enemy spirits that need to be dealt with. We command that those evil spirits be rebuked, stripped of their power, cast it out and cast it down. To where Lord Jesus, to wherever Lord Jesus would have them be cast it down. Um, so next would be Afi Afidiophobia, the fear of snakes. 
Those spirits behind that come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by esteem. Panic. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by peacefulness and self-assurance. Be calm and be content as well. Panigraphobia, the fear of smothering. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by pleasure. Seophobia, the fear of shadows. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by respect. Sphexophobia, the fear of wasps. Fear of wasps. Wasp. Wasps. <laughs> that one was like bees. So I had P-phobia and spexophobia. I wonder if there's one for hornets. Well, anyway, come out in Jesus' name. Be replaced by affection. Um, terror. Come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by calmness. Treachery, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by constancy, fidelity, and faithfulness, forthrightness, and frankness. And honesty, oh wait, no, hold on a For victimization, victimization, come out in Jesus' name and be replaced by uh, the ones I accidentally named, but I guess, you know, uh, be replaced by forthrightness, frankness, and honesty in Jesus' name. We also pray for the release of power, love, sound mind, boldness, peace, spiritual mindedness, liberty, salvation, and courage to reach those folks in Jesus' name. All right, so that's pretty much it for the spirit of fear and torment. We do also bind the spirits of reporting, trembling, and anguish. Deuteronomy 2 and 25 in Jesus' name. Uh, actually this is like the rest of prayer 18 for whatever reason i don't know maybe i was too exhausted to like to do it but i definitely missed this one so this is also a part of prayer 18 definitely forgot it so we pray uh we do pray satan casting out satan and that it go on continually in jesus christ's name we lose rafa to the listeners in need of healing in Jesus' name. We smash the strongholds of the enemy. We bind false tongues and bind the demonic forces to inactivity in Jesus' name. But yeah, we do pray Satan casting out Satan that it increase and go on continually. Lord, let the... Okay, let, the, uh, let them sink the demons and forget how to swim. The uh, imps fighting against the... Stronger demons, higher rank ones. Well, we also use like the you know the lower rank demons to attack the higher ranked ones. In Jesus' name, um, or we also uh, command the demons to take their bayonets and torches and smite each other. Smite the well, smite their. Uh, their leaders you know, burn their supply in Jesus name I plug the enemy's weapon and I smite them I plug the enemy's weapons and I smite them with them with those weapons in Jesus name what was the reference to it? The reference was, I believe, I think it was Second Samuel and First Chronicles, or maybe it was Second Chronicles. Hey, bud.
hold on, hold on. Don't worry about it. Whatever, if anybody's there, just ignore them. Usually it's, it's to disrupt. But don't let it get to you. Okay, so... Yeah, an example of this, First Chronicles 11 and 23. First Chronicles... 11 and 23, so that's what we're referencing when Jesus is saying. Okay, we command unforgiveness to come out in Jesus' name, be replaced by forgiveness. Uh, Lord, send your angels and have them go as sweeping sword spirits, sweeping arrow spirits, thesaurus, adjective, noun, uh okay so let's just say all right so let's do this we command so we found out scouting was an evil spirit we command the demons to go as scouting spirits so this is from the thesaurus second noun as well as reporting spirits To attack the demons guarding, you know, uh, heavily concentrated areas that the angels uh, deliver any anyone trapped in there, anyone in bondage, anyone in prison. And that they also be adopted and receive love, healing, mercy, grace in Jesus' name. But Lord, also, I also ask if you could please send your angels to also go as bow and arrow. The thing was though, when I tried to find bow by itself, I didn't get I didn't get it at all. I can find arrow by itself; it's a spirit. So I had to type bow and arrow to get the set together, and that's also a spirit. So we got it from the thesaurus, and now, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, motorcycles and bikes, I, I think they're cool. And I used to like that show. Was it? I mean, I, I still do. I like the song, and oddly enough, still remember how it goes. At least the English dub. Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds. That's what that show is. What got me to to have a like for uh, bikes and stuff, and and it made me uh, like dueling even more. Although now it's just bikes and applying what what we know in in warfare. But yeah, warfare and deliverance are different, and we want and we seek to know. How to do the other thing because that's what the lord wants us to do and we can I, I think it's possible and it can be done and be you know one can be dedicated and devoted to it but yeah sorry lord you know i ask also that your angels go as bow and arrow and attack you know smite pierce strike discomfit and destroy the enemy in jesus name But yeah, examples of this is uh, Psalm 104 and 4, First Kings 22 and 22. And a spirit volunteered as a lying, to go as a lying spirit. But I don't, you know, I don't entirely understand exactly how that works. Like, I mean, if lying is an evil spirit, does that mean that spirit that volunteered was a, was a demon or a good spirit? Can good spirits go as evil spirits? So I had a question like that that I wasn't even certain of. And I'm actually hoping somebody can actually answer that for me. Because that honestly left me with questions that I had no answers to. I think I also sent a letter too with some more questions that uh, to the church that I, that I wish that I, you know, was wondering could get, you know, answered for me. And I really appreciate it, so thanks. But yeah, um, and Lord, you know, Father, we also ask if you could also send your angels to go as sweep report. And also reporting spirits, because I mean, Israel had spies, they reported. 
So, Lord, while the enemy has their reporting spirits, we ask that your angels also go as reporting spirits and sweep, report spirits. Um, sweep, I think the idea I had behind that. So, hold on, let me go to the thesaurus. Like, the idea I had behind that. You know, enemy, you know, Satan's minds, you know, uh, Hidden explosives that he may lay, landmines. Lord, I, you know, I was wondering and asking also if you could please send those type of spirits to remove those type of spirits. But also, so basically, yeah, um, it would be sweep as in verb. I believe the first verb. But also... Okay, so basically sweep also, sweep spirits, you know, going as such like that by itself, but also the first noun, because I understand that um, it, it, it means range and extent, so like to span or stretch, also, yeah, so like in, you know, expanding, increasing the, the capability of, you know, the, of reporting. So they, you know, we'd be able to get more information. So like, yeah, pretty much setting our own network. And we ask, Lord, that, you know, and loose warrior angels to destroy the enemy's networks and put our own in place. You know, on the territories we conquered and as we conquer, you know, more territories in Jesus name. All right, thank you. And uh, the last thing, I don't know, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really much anything else other than what was in front of me, but I, that was a part of prayer 18 and I forgot to add the rest to it. So um, the last thing was, Lord, any offenses, negative words, we speak positive words to, Cancel and smother the negative words to overcome them, to defeat them. For offenses, Lord, we ask that you know those things be returned back to the sender by the blood of Jesus. Offenses being sent to me, those are my prayers, the listener. You know, negative words spoken coming from the enemy, the real enemy. I'll send them back to the sender. Um. Actually, there, yeah, and the funny thing was, I was going to add one other thing. This was like concerning the exploration prayer. So I might as well, that was going to be a part of prayer 18 as well. So I might as well also include it. I'm just going to read it. Again. But yeah, Lord, please send the offenses back to the enemy through the blood of Jesus. We, I mean, through the blood of Jesus, we send the enemy's offenses and negative words back on them and further ones that they send more to us that includes also spells and curses by the blood of jesus we send them back to the sender in jesus name so this was for exploration right so what I, so what did i write okay so i command non-proliferation to attack arms limitation arms reduction to attack defense cuts and mind to coat control attack sorry mind to coat control I didn't even put a comma. All right, so we're going to add that. Attack gun control in Jesus' name. We lose chaos, disorganize, neglect, and surrender, and mismanage upon controlling spirits, occult control spirits, and mind controlling spirits in Jesus Christ's name. I command the lesser demons to trap the higher demons and for the snares to take them. Break their bones and joints, make them slow, bring them down, discombobulate them in Jesus Christ's name. I bind a command upon the demons, Isaiah 33 and 11. Lord, send your angels to get the signs and wonders of the enemy out of the way. And I command the angelic forces to open fire upon the demons. Deliver our soul and souls of those in our prayers from the wicked and the sword, Psalm 17 and 13. 
Psalm 22 and 20, Psalm 55 and 18. He was cherubs and angels of water and ice. So we're making reference to uh, well, basing our our moves with Matthew from Matthew 8, 14 and 28 and Job 37 and 10 upon the enemy to have them taken and trapped by these things. We bind and, and ask a seal to be placed on the demons. We also ask and loose angels with jackhammers, torches, fans, tasers, pitchers of water, freezers, and boxes. And we base them on Matthew 18 and 10. Well, not basing them on Matthew. Matthew 18 and 10 is uh, we're using the guardian angels to help us. Or special angels to help us. Um, but we're basing them on, was it 1 Kings 19 and 11 to 12? Job 38 and 35, Matthew 14 and 28, Psalm 147 and 17, Job 14 and 17, Joshua 10 and 16 to 27, upon the demons and release judgment and cleansing with fire, Isaiah 4 and 4. I command military and war spirits, also all kinds of games, and command they fight each other. We lose legions of diversions, burning, judgment, destruction, confusion, messages, and war angels upon them. We lose a stampede of oxen upon the enemy, Leviticus 11 and 4. So we base it on that. We bind a deaf spirit to their ears so that the enemy's gunfire, that the demon's gunfire doesn't affect them as they charge and run them over, which we command. We loose it up afterwards when they tread on them. Hide and put a hedge around, Job 1 and 10, Hosea 2 and 6, all the people and animals that would be sought out to be sacrificed, possessed, and used against us or be cursed. Um... We release the sword of the Lord against the powers of hell, Judges 7 and 18. I will wet my glittering sword and render vengeance against the enemy, Deuteronomy 32 and 41. Gird your sword upon your thigh and ride prosperously through the earth, Psalm 45 and 3. Let your enemies fall by the sword, Psalm 63 and 10. I release the sword of the Lord against Leviathan, Isaiah 27 and 1. Let the Assyrian fall with the sword, Isaiah 31 and 8. Send angels with flaming swords to fight our battles in the he heavens. Whoa. Need some more water. I release a two-edged sword to execute judgments written. That I definitely need water. Gird your sword upon your thigh and ride prosperously through the earth, Psalm 45 and 3. Let your enemies fall by the sword, Psalm 63 and 10. I release the sword of the Lord against Leviathan, Isaiah 27 and 1. Let the Assyrian fall with the sword, Isaiah 31 and 8. Send angels with flaming swords to fight our battles in the heavens. I release a two-edged sword to execute judgments written, Psalm 149 and 6. Release the sword of your mouth against the enemy, Revelation 19 and 15. We scatter and fragment the souls of the demons. I had no idea you could do that. <clears throat> anyway, we ask that riders and horses of war and military be loosed upon the enemy, Psalm 68 and 17. I take authority over the demonic horses and command the attack of the demonic rider. Okay. The Lord, re the Lord rebuke thee with fire, demon. We lose 1 Kings 19 and 18 upon the demons, which you command be bound, smoted, and discomfited. Lord, I hope you don't mind, but we're going to try it. Um, well, we could use their help, too. So I want to hit the demons with everything we got. Uh, I command captured demons to be shot from catapults and launch of ballistas, which you ask be sent and send them back and have them rain down. On the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name, we purify our will, emotions, and mind 
from any me enemy infiltrations and strongholds, including from our family in Jesus' name. I plead in the blood of Jesus over us all, including myself in Jesus Christ's name. I also lose angels with shovels and ask that they also have shovel traps and grenade launcher traps to reveal the roots of the demons and command to be burned with fire. The traps on the demons in Jesus' name, we ask more warrior angels. Uh, I should have put, kind of put a comma right here. more warrior angels be loose with a mole like and show like and container to fire gravels a projectile and an all armor uh, so based on second chronicles 26 and 15 ezekiel 38 and 4 i'm gathered from the thesaurus i just call this show tank armor and it applies the concepts of an electric poly bucket mixer and a mortar and steel drum mixer okay so we ask and bind for the mixer, shooter, and fire gravel shots and engine bullets upon the demons in Jesus Christ's name. We bind that armor suit to ourselves and we pray, ask, build, and loose a flaming gun engine with shovel arms, weaponry attached to it. And we loose lightning and command and empower the attacks with the shovels in Jesus Christ's name. So based on 1 Samuel 20 and 40, 2 Chronicles 26 and 15, and then now. do command the demons to dig trenches and ditches and to cause their fellow demon to fall in them that they cause maximum damage in Jesus name uh, I loose and break myself and those are my prayers from affliction Psalm 143 and 12 save heal and deliver our soul and those in our prayers Lord please in Jesus name and we thank you Lord Jesus we ask pray and build and prove special engine armor specified Thanks for the support, huh, man? You know, I kind of removed the title. I mean, I still stuck to it, though. I'm still sticking with it. But yeah, against the enemies we face before using them against uh, stronger demons, we smite, discomfit, and slay them with these with these in Jesus' name. For Samuel, so yeah, based on for Samuel 17 and 38, 2 Kings 10 and 2, Ezekiel 38 and 4, 2 Chronicles 26 and 15. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this opportunity to ask you we plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves, my family, they that are with us, of course. We pray, archer angels, to pierce through the enemy's shields and loose warrior angels upon them. May their arrows be multiplied upon the enemy, and I command that they shoot them. Pray a wind be sent, Exodus 10 and 19, to pluck up and plant the demons in the sea, into the sea, on, you know, free ones, uh, and once the demons are done with whatever they're doing. Uh, I bind a hedge around us and over us, covering every side. I claim for us Psalm 18, Proverbs 18 and 10, Psalm 144, 1 to 2, Psalm 140 and 1. For ourselves, your forces, Lord, those in our prayers, and family, even friends, and those in need against the demons in Ephesians, with Ephesians 6 armor, so they can make it you know, to those levels. So if they do, and, and you lead them, Lord. We ask and loose angelic and divine tanks upon the enemy, I ask and pray for demonic artillery, destroying defensive traps upon Satan's artillery. We punch out the enemy's rammers, cause them to cease. We pray, Lord, you send your fire support teams against the enemy. We mount a bike and bind fast moving targets, even the swiftest demons. And uh, what was it? Okay, any targets we miss, we mow them down or cut them. And yeah, that includes like fast feline <laughs> demon spirits and, and, and canine type, you know, fast demon spirits. Any targets we miss, we mow them down or cut them with the sword. We have mowed them down and destroyed them. I plead the blood of Jesus over us all, including myself in Jesus' name. We bind the demons and shoot them with the bayonet. We release the fire of God upon the enemy. Also, we rob, uh, you know, those strong demons of their strength. We bind weakness to their arms and hands and feet and legs. We command the enemy to be bound. We lose legions of vengeance, power, brightness, sword, artillery upon the real enemy. We lose legions of vengeance. I kind of added that one, though. 
Vengeance, power, brightness, artillery, and engine to stop, hinder, attack, and destroy them as well. He was burning, judgment, destruction, confusion, warrior angels, singing, instrument, and songs upon the real enemy in Jesus' name. We're pleading the blood of Jesus over ourselves. We break and loose ourselves and those in our prayers, a leader. Those that have those spirits from soul ties with demons, human demons, picking up spirits in literature, from reading, folklore, science fiction, science fiction, fiction, horror, fantasy, comedy, and every other genre in Jesus' name. We bind the demons, even warrior devils and wind ones, and we smite them with the sword of the spirit and angel. We block their attacks with the shield of faith in Jesus' name. We come against the demonic spirit giants in Luke Isaiah 29 and 6, Psalm 147 and 18, Psalm 18 and 14, Psalm 148 and 8, 1 Kings 19 and 11 and 12, Isaiah 28 and 2, and Isaiah 30 and 30 upon them. Let them be hit by these things, send an angel to loose a stone upon them, and having flowing waters cover it, Matthew 14 and 28. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and those in our prayers and the reader in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. So that was a part of all that. Also, how people be saying a lot of things, but how how do I, you know, it's like you can confirm it, but I can't somehow find out like what? Anyway, well. Hope people can benefit and take advantage of uh, these healings, though, because I do intend to get those demons out of there. I want to get them out of there. Okay, so spirits of murder, hate, violence, lust, Asmodeus, fighting, rage, destruction, uh... As destruction as in Osmodius, suicide, sadism, and masochism. We bind you and command you come out in Jesus' name and go to wherever Lord Jesus would have you go and be replaced by the opposite good spirits in Jesus' name. We do the same for telekinesis. Come out in Jesus' name. Telepathy, mind reading, astral projection, and soul travel under the leadership of demonic guys. The demonic guys come out and be bound as well. Come out in Jesus' name and go to wherever Lord Jesus would have you go and be replaced by the opposite good spirits in Jesus' name. Um, ESP, come out in Jesus' name, mind control, telepathy, clairvoyance, palm reading, astrology, signs of the zodiac. Aquarius, Edgar Case, Gene Dixon, fortune telling. Mind reading, case reading, card reading, tarot card reading, reincarnation, evolution studying and teaching, Eastern religion, interest and study in yoga. Um, come out and be bound in Jesus' name and go to wherever Lord Jesus would have you go and be replaced by the opposite good spirits. Okay, so spirits of bronchitis, lung congestion, cold, nervous breakdown, headache, migraine, migraine, stomach ache, insomnia, tension, nervousness, anxiety, fears, scruples, guilt, back problems, slip disc. Oh yeah, the thing with the back problem. Thing. Right, lower back pain, spinal pain, shoulder pain. I forgot I also had, I didn't just have a stiff neck, I also had pain in my shoulders. But yeah, shoulder pain, stiff neck, uh, slip disc. Oh yeah, spirit of hunchback. Hunchback spirit. That's something I also got rid of. Uh, which was a problem. Slip disc, sciatic, nerve problems, arthritis, bursitis, uh, allergies, high blood pressure, and bleeding nose. Come out and be bound in Jesus' name. Go to wherever Lord Jesus would have you go. And be replaced by the opposite good spirits. In Jesus' mighty name. So that's pretty much it for this one. For this. It's not. I'm still reading Annihilating the Host of Hell. But basically I'm just up to the testimonies. The book I am reading right now is. Uh, 
harassing the hosts of hell. I was hoping to do some reading. Actually. So that was what caught my eye. I'm going to read. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I guess I'm bouncing around. What caught my eye the most though was chapter 8 and chapter 9. Scripture doesn't teach infant baptism. And the title for chapter 9 is Excommunication, Catholic Shortcut to Hell. Okay, so we can do a little bit of that. Oh, this one's long. Now I'm getting hungry. Okay, so the one was chapter eight. Yeah, no, hold on. Uh, ninety-seven. Oh, uh, at best I can read chapter eight to you. And reading ain't bad. Neither narrating. Okay, so chapter eight of. Harassing the hosts of hell, attack, 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 by Wynne Worley. So scripture does not teach infant baptism. The Roman Catholic institution freely admits it cannot prove from the Bible that infants should be baptized. It is difficult to give strict proof from the scripture in favor of it. So this is from the Catholic Dictionary at Addis and Arnold, page 61. Also, yeah, after this, I'm going to eat because I'm already drained. The baptism of infants is not positively directed in the Gospels, teaching of the Catholic Church. Smith, Sacraments and Sacramentals, page 23. Scripture does not say, sorry, Scripture does say with no apology, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in, in the re, in the re because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matthew 7 and 13, verse 14. In spite of this, the Roman Catholic institution states, when all fear of persecution had passed away and the empire had become almost entirely Christian, the necessity for a prolonged period of trial and instruction no longer existed. While at the same time, the fuller teaching on the subject of original sin, occasioned by the Pelagian, Heresy gradually led to the administration of baptism to infants. In such cases, instruction was, of course, impossible. Through traces of it are still to be seen in the rite of infant baptism, where the godparents are put through a sort of catechism in the name of the child. So this is from the Catholic Encyclopedia. Uh, I'm guessing that's well, volume 5, V, page... 78, where in the 4th and 5th centuries, the doctrine of original sin became better known. The practice of infant baptism progressed rapidly. Legislation on the sacraments in the new code of canon law. A. A. Rinhock, A. Rinhock, I guess that's the name of the book. Page 72. Anciently, when baptism was constantly given to adults and the rite of immersion prevailed, it was inconvenient to baptize in the church itself. And hence, after the conversion of Constantine, separate buildings for the administration of baptism were erected and attached to the cathedral church. Catholic Dictionary, D Addis and Arnold, page 64. They would admit the same rule for pagan as for the Christian countries and baptize any person found unconscious and in a dying condition. Legislation on the Sacraments, A. Rinhold, page 32. Therefore, the Roman Catholic institution baptizes the unconscious and the unbelieving. Valid reception does not require faith. Therefore, an unbeliever who so desires may be validly baptized, even though he has not faith. More Theology, Jones, Adelman, page 320. So these are the sources. 
They also state that an infant being presented for baptism is in positive enmity, though unconsciously, to Almighty God. Priestly Vocation Ward, page 89. Of course, none of this is biblical. As they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts 8 and 36, verse 37. Well, that explains why in the house, like, I didn't feel encouraged to read the Bible. There was no encouragement for it. I was lazy. Kept procrastinating. Even though I saw it, I knew it was there. But, you know, as it turns out, of course, you know, it wasn't. You know, it was uh, it wasn't the actual real Bible, but uh, yeah, I mean, that would explain why I didn't have any desire to even pit read it. It was just sitting there in my home, and you know, never bothered to pick it up because you need the Bible to nourish your faith. You need faith. Your best way to get that is by reading the Word. That'll also help, you know, you know, with your hope also to better understand how it works. They show you what you know where to the Bible shows you where to place your hope in. So Philip underlines the truth stated elsewhere in the Bible that only conscious believers are qualified candidates for genuine Christian baptism. Concerning children, Jesus said, of such is the kingdom of God, Luke 18 and 15. And said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 18 and 3. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven, Matthew 18 and 10. Thus the Lord Jesus taught clearly that little children are under his special care and protection and have no need for the administration of some man-made sacrament, so-called. A miscarried fetus or embryo, no matter how small, must always be baptized absolutely, if certainly alive, conditionally, if doubtfully alive. Maceration, putrefaction, or advanced general decomposition, in this case, is the only certain sign of real death. Break the membranes or open the blood clot or mold surrounding the embryo. Immerse it, it in a pan of water, making sure the water contacts the fetus itself. And while moving it about in the water so that there will be a washing or flowing of bapti baptizing, saying the words usually those con for conditional baptism. If you are capable, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. How you remove it from water, never fail to follow this procedure, even though told in the hospital to take the clock, etc., intact to the medical lab. The water must contact and flow on the fetus or embryo itself. That baptism on the covering membrane is no baptism. Those in, me in the medical lab are not, in fact, interested in the intactness of the membranes. Hands break the membranes, baptize, and if necessary, explain afterwards. This is from the Spiritual First Aid Procedures, G. H. Fitzgibbons, page 3. The obligation imposed extends to even the smallest fetus, even though it is aborted immediately after conception. Sac Sacred Canons, Abel and Hannon, verse 753. The Bible has much to say concerning baptism. It tells who should be baptized and why. Give examples and conditions. However, baptism of an infant is never mentioned. And certainly not a fetus or embryo. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, do what I can to keep, you know, you know, what I do simple and not overcomplicated. Because I got to tell you, there's some things that are hard for me to follow. So I try not to, you know, over the top of just getting exactly what I need. But anyway, uh, intrauterine baptism. This is what they do. 
If during the actual process of birth there is an obstruction and the child is in danger of death before complete delivery, what is, what is to be done? The general rule is, of course, that a child should not be baptized until fully born, but if there is danger that, that the child will die of suffocation or from some other cause before complete delivery, it should be baptized on the first available members. If the head emerges first, the child should be baptized conditionally on that member. And again, conditionally on, conditionally on the head after delivery. So quizzes on hospital ethics, rumble, page 56. First, it is morally compulsory to follow the safer course when there is a question of means to be taken to save a soul. Thus, an infant which was baptized in the uterus may be born in a dying condition. It don't say. It's got me thinking. It's only probably that the uterine baptism fulfilled the requirements for a valid reception of the sacrament. That stuff is evil. Anyway, the infant must therefore be baptized. Again, conditionally. Second, it is morally compulsory to follow the safer course when there is a question of the validity of the sacraments. Uh huh. No questioning. A nurse, for example, comes across an unbaptized infant who is obviously dying. An emergency baptism is an immediate necessity. Questioning this whole thing. Medical Ethics, McFadden, part, page 23. A syringe should be filled with boiling, boiled water which has first been cooled to body temperature. Say what? If plain water is dangerous, one part of big chloride of mercury a thousand parts of water may be added to it. Makes me wonder sometimes what exactly did they do to me? Anyway, uh, the membrane surrounding the fetus must be ruptured, discharging the amniotic fluid since the water must come into contact with the fetus itself. Quizzes on hospital ethics, rumble page 56. If the fetus was baptized in the mother's womb, the child shall, when born, be baptized again conditionally. Canon 746. Care should be taken that every fetus born prematurely, no matter what stage of pregnancy, be baptized absolutely. If life is certain or conditionally, if life is doubtful, the new canon law, Boywood, page 153. They put mercury in the child. I thought, you know, uh, the dentist saw something else. But anyway, whatever. Um, obligation of the physician. So these guys were able to get the information on the kinds of practices they do here. And it, yeah, this ain't scriptural or, or nothing like that. They shouldn't be doing this stuff. And honestly, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any answer for that, Lord. All I can ask you is, you know, please save and deliver these, you know, the child and these people from such practices in Jesus' name. Yeah, it would take a miracle if not. Personally, I, I, don't, I don't have any idea on how to even give that direction. You know, my, uh, my prayer. But yeah, I'll, you know, we'll leave it to you. We put our trust in you. And you know how to take care of that. Okay, so obligation of the physician. Theologians generally acknowledge the obligation of a physician to perform a cesarean operation after the death of the mother for the purpose of procuring baptism for the child. Now there is a doubt about this obligation if the mother's death occurs during the first four months of pregnancy. And as much as pregnancy is not certain during that period, while it is morally certain that a fetus of that age cannot survive its mother, similar, similarly, there is doubt about this obligation if the time of delivery is close at hand when the mother dies since the child cannot be baptized in the womb in the latter case, however, the physician is obligated to perform the operation to save the child's life. 
The common opinion holds that the mother is not obligated, is not obligated to undergo. I just remember sorry, something. Sorry. The common opinion holds that the mother is not obligated to undergo a cesarean operation to procure baptism for the child since the later can be baptized in the womb. Sacred Canons, Abo and Hennon, page 752. The above material brings to mind that what Jesus told some religious hypocrites, ye blind guys, restrain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Matthew 23 and 34. Babies in hospitals baptized against parents' wishes. Oh, so it's against their will. Oh, never mind. I don't think that happened to us, though. But still, it's crazy that this stuff happens. Dying infants and babies must always be baptized, i.e. any child below the age of reason. If you're not absolutely sure the baby was baptized at all or correctly invalid, invalidly baptized, then a priest cannot be had in time baptized without delay the child is dying it's right to heaven have priority over all the rights and considerations even those of parents who though perhaps here and now unwilling because they are not informed or misinformed i surely wish everything done to guarantee their baby the vision of god in all eternity the baptism is easy taken care of if visitors cannot be asked to leave the room the doctor or nurse facing away from them uses a towel with clean water to bathe the child's forehead and squeezes it. When the water is seen to flow, the words are said audibly but in a whisper. Spiritual first uh, aid procedures for its given as J, page 3. So that's the source of that statement. All the baptisms must be recorded. I bid, page 4. This is one of the ways which enable the Catholic Church to aim such frightening numbers. That's how they get them at large. Oh, man. Oof. Wait. They didn't put mercury in me, did they? Well, I mean, technically I'd be dead already, but... Thank God we're not. Okay, so limbo. Hell for little babies. As baptism is the door of the church, the unbaptized are entirely without its pale. As a consequence, such person, by ordinary law of the church, may not be buried in consecrated ground. <sighs> This includes the infants of even Catholic parents. So they control the ground. <laughs> yeah, right. Man. Catholic Encyclopedia, uh, I guess what, 11, page 260, volume 11, page 267. All persons who certainly die without baptism are excluded. from ecclesiastical burial. Canon 1204, even children born of Catholic parents, administrative le legislation, Irene Hack, page 87. Question, are there any special rules concerning the disposal of dead fetus or a full-term stillborn child? Answer, yes. If the mother dies also, the fetus or child should be buried with the mother. If the mother does not die, the fetus or child, if baptized, should be given Catholic burial in consecrated ground. If not baptized, it should be buried in unconsecrated ground without any religious rites. Quizzes on Hospital Ethics, page 57 and page 58. Holy Mass cannot be offered for unbaptized infants because it cannot benefit the lost in hell, nor the souls in limbo, nor the blessed in heaven. We know that in limbo dwell children who died without baptism. In limbo. But we know that's not true. Uh... For these, we do not offer the holy sacrifice. Legislation on the sacraments, our Rinhag, page 105. So that's pretty much it. If I got time, I mean, in another video, I might read chapter uh, 8, no, chapter 9.
pretty much it. And I've been reading this stuff, so the more I read, uh, and yeah, I've heard some gruesome things. But yeah, the that stuff you hear about in the churches about like sexual, you know, scandals, things coming out in the church. Yeah, I mean. It's not just one individual in there. That, that place has a there's corruption in there. Those things ain't exaggerated. Or lies. Yeah, um that's pretty much it, right? Alright, so I'm gonna eat. I'll see you later.